Hey, everybody. It's Joycelyn Wells with Joy Exposed. And it's Friday, August 21st. And we're late, right? We're not even late just tonight. We're late even from Wednesday to Friday from 9 o'clock to 9.22. We're late, late. So my bad on that. Maybe my three cheers of joy will help me feel a little better and we can talk about why I feel like I'm so late or what's going on with me. And um, maybe we can figure that piece out. Jesus, have mercy. I need, I need some help. I'm still getting stuff set up. Y'all hear that? Looking for a plug. <clears throat> Trying to get my life together. All right, three cheers of joy. Let's go. All right, for three cheers of joy. Remember, three cheers of joy, three moments of self-celebration that have nothing to do with anybody but you. Things that happened to you all week and that made you smile or reminded you how important you were and how proud you were of yourself and how you're being of your purpose or shit, anything, how you just got through the day. It doesn't matter. What your three cheers of joy are only yours and you get to choose them. So, all right, so three cheers of joy for me. Let's get started. Um, first of all, I can't find where I am on Facebook. <laughs> Me and this damn technology. Okay. All right. So my first cheer of joy because of that, co that comment is I'm very pleased that I haven't given up on trying to use the technology. That's a big deal for me because I every week I'm struggling with the technology. But for whatever reason, I haven't given up. So I'm pleased that I'm still trying to find my way with the damn technology. <laughs> so first year joy. Yay, technology. Don't be afraid of it, boo. That's what I got to tell myself because every week I am caught up in the damn trying to figure the technology out. So anyway, so my first year joy, I haven't given up on technology. My second year of joy, um, I'm on day 18, that's not true. I'm on day 20 of my workout challenge. And so in my workout challenge, I've been posting a little bit, but I do like crunches and burpees and sit-ups and push-ups and squats and lunges and planks and jumping jacks. I think that's it. So, but it's over like two days and the numbers increase like incrementally each day till you get to like, a max and then you're done or you start over. So that's where I am. And I really feel like I have met my edge. Like it's gonna require something special for me to get through my workout for today. I didn't even finish it. I started it and I knew when I was doing it that I couldn't do it. And I tried my mind tricks and everything. So I guess my cheer of joy is I know that I'm at my edge, but I haven't stopped. Like I didn't say I'm not doing it anymore. I just made myself do as much as I could and say, I'll do this again tomorrow. So I'm going to repeat the exercises for today or not even repeat them. I'm going to do the exercises for today on tomorrow. That's just going to push me off a day, but it's okay. I can do that. I haven't quit. And that's my second cheer of joy. So the first year of joy is I haven't given up on technology. And my second year of joy is, hell, I haven't given up on my fitness challenge. I think that's a theme tonight, right? Like I'm struggling, like I'm struggling mentally, like I'm in a place and I, I'm trying to figure out how to get through this. And both of my cheers so far is about not quitting. So I'm, I'm gonna have to think about those. Okay, my third year of joy is my birthday's coming up. My birthday's next Friday. So a week from today, I'll be 51. So we'll go with that as my third year of joy that I've lived to see another year. I'll get to see another um, birthday and that is next week. So three cheers of joy tonight is brought to you by Menage a Trois. Uh, it's a, uh, ah, Jesus. It's aged in a bourbon barrel and it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. So. I stopped buying my poppy that I was drinking so much of and enjoying so much simply because I was also drinking so much. <laughs> and I figure the only reason I'm drinking this much wine is because I really like it. So, you know, of course you got to tweak your thought process. So I decided no more poppy for me for a while. So I had to buy some wine at the regular price 
it wasn't on sale my great sale that's been on for months so but I had to kind of tweak how much um wine I was drinking um so this is my 50 years of joy I guess I got to get me another one I got a week to go and STM specialty <coughs> is on vacation so I may not get one before my birthday but it's okay I'll get it afterwards so cheers to my three cheers of joy. The first being, I haven't given up on the technology. The second being, I haven't given up on my fitness challenge. And if anybody's interested in doing the fitness challenge with me, let me know. I can hook it up. We can do it together. I'd love um, accountability partner. That would be phenomenal. I have one that we use just for our weight. We send each other our weight on Thursdays. And I'm gonna talk about that for a second too, but let me do this. Let me finish, wrap this up. So first cheer of joy was I haven't given up on technology. The second cheer of joy is that I had not given up on my fitness challenge and I started it today and I'm gonna have to do today tomorrow. And that's okay. And then the third one is, um, oh, my birthday's coming. Jeez, I forgot. All right, my third one is my birthday's coming next week. And so those are three cheers of joy. So remember, on joy, uh, on joy, on joy exposed, everything just, when you, joy is exposed, everything just feels better. Blah, 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 blah. I'll tell you why I'm so tongue tied right now. So I postponed the show tonight because of the Democratic National Convention. So it was from Monday to Thursday. So on Wednesday, when I was talking about it, it was brought to my attention that it was still the convention. I had forgotten about, about it because it was Wednesday and Wednesday is Joy Exposed night. So then I was like, well, I can't do Joy Exposed on the same day as night of the convention. So let me just postpone it to Friday. Then I can talk about the convention some and, you know, do the uh, Joy Exposed on Friday. Well, here it is Friday. I talked to you guys about not quitting technology. I talked to you about not quitting my fitness challenge. Well, Friday kicked my ass. Like today has been mentally tough for me and it can be it could be a culmination of everything or because I can't see anything today that just really fucked with me so it could be just a culmination of everything but I just felt so bad like I wanted to cry like and I was thinking like what's happened that I wanted to cry and um I ended up talking to Faceless Love for a little while because he's had some stuff going on at work and I talked to him and he was just like what hey what's going on with you and I was like nothing I'm fine and I stopped talking because I was finna cry like I felt it and then I talked to him for just about 10 or 15 minutes and I said I'm gonna try to take a nap so um I'm gonna try to take a nap so I'll talk to you later and uh he said okay so that was like 7 30 I think <laughs> well at 9.05, my phone was ringing, waking me up. That's why I'm blah, 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 tongue-tied, because I was just asleep. I passed out, like, consumed with just exhaustion, I guess. So I, um, that's why I'm trying to get my life together right now, trying to hook all the technology up and had to go get my wine. I was fumbling that and fumbling my words because we all know when joy is exposed everything feels better we know what it is I just couldn't get it out so my bad on that and I didn't forget or maybe I did but whatever I'm here and today was a motherfucker for me so and nothing happened like nothing really happened it's just <sighs> whatever it was that happened just took effect today and I was tired and getting my classroom ready and just looking forward at things that I have to do and maybe it's just overwhelming hell I feel like I'm about to cry now <sighs> but it's all right so <clears throat> three cheers I mean um Facebook post of the week it's brought to you by STM Specialties. And let's get started with those. I've got some funny ones that um, 
I've been saving and then I got a nut something else about COVID, but that's going to be in a few minutes. When, you know, I got to talk about COVID that should have me whacked out every week. Um, is this it? Hold on a second. Let me find that. That's not it. Okay. So, Oh, no, I read that last week. <laughs> yep, I read those last week. Dang it. Oh. Okay, so this is the first one. This is my uh, Facebook post of the week. And this is by... Oh. Excuse me, look at me yawning. I did this like a week ago. Remember on last Wednesday night, I was yawning just the same. I have no idea what's going on. All right, so this is about, uh, this is from uh, Micah Sierra or Joshua Kaysen, I believe is my Facebook friend. And this post is by Micah Sierra, someone else he shared. It says, because of WAP, we have learned, and we know that um, Cardi B and Meg, Meg Thee Stallion made this song called WAP, Wet Ass Pussy. And um, that sent everybody into a tailspin because how dare they talk about their wet ass pussy? Like, oh my gosh, it's a secret. Oh, I shouldn't talk about it. It's blasphemous, whatever. So it sent people into a tailspin, women and men, because you know how sanctimonious we get in the United States. We do all kinds of cruddy shit behind the scenes and then you don't want to talk about it when someone wants to talk about it well the truth of the matter is it's good to have wet ass pussy that's what everybody wants every woman wants to have one and every man wants to get some that's that's the beauty of getting some pussy it's got to be good and wet and yummy right so but to talk about it it's got to be like oh my gosh it's so traumatic you shouldn't talk about it right but whatever so here's this post that says, because of WAP, we have learned 27-year-old Cardi B is worth over $8 million. Married is an amazing mother, yet men hate her. 25-year-old Meg the Stallion is worth over $3 million. Educated, AF, a woman's motivator, yet men hate her. Men hate women who love to party, but hate going to parties with no women. Men hate women who have sex, yet want to have sex with women. Men hate independent women, yet hate for their own woman, for their own woman to be dependent on them. Men hate women who dress provocatively, yet cheat with women who wear whole shit. <laughs> Men hate with a passion women buying whole houses and cars with only fans, yet they are the main consumers. Make it make sense. What do you conclude from this? So I read this and I thought this was pretty cool because this goes along with the hypocritical moment because people do try to regulate your movement on how you do it on the things that make them comfortable. With truth be told, who you are and how you are will literally have no impact on the person who's there to love you, right? That's not something that stops them from loving you because they're designed to love you. You're designed to be loved by them. So if they have hangups with the things that you do, it's, you already know it's time to walk away from those situations because no one can control you. No one puts you in a box, right? Nobody puts baby in a corner. So I actually like this Facebook post of the week because it is true. You have men talk about hell when I was dating men could always tell me what they love about me and they wanted to date me and then all of a sudden the things that they love about me are the things they wanted me to stop doing because good women don't do those things or good women don't talk like that or good women don't blah blah and you're kind of like well what the fuck why what what's what's the point you know what what is this so you have to really be careful about that because people who love you who are there to love you for you don't put boundaries on how you operate they don't put boundaries on how you move the their goal or their they show up to expand the way in which you operate to make sure that you're greater than the space that you were in before they got there so that's the beauty of um thinking about relationships and stuff all right so on to the next uh facebook post of the week Anne marie duncan posted 
a, she did a screenshot of kind of like a tweet, a tweet, a tweet, sorry, a tweet or a Twitter feed, Twitter feed, a tweet, and then um, a response. <laughs> so it said, it starts off a woman who says, good morning, ladies, and the other gender that betrayed Jesus. And the reply was <laughs> from a guy. Good morning to you, snake language translator, the forbidden fruit eater, Samson's hair cutter, John the Baptist head on a platter requester, Joseph seducer. Hope you had a sound sleep. <laughs> so I thought it was funny that the lady was saying, like trying to say that, you know, men betray Jesus. And he just went with like a litany of things from the Bible that women did that was just downright vicious right uh and then the, the caption says oh man that escalated quickly <laughs> so that was kind of cool all right so here's another one i think i have a couple i'm going to read and a couple more i'll read because i just have a couple more i'm going to read and this is a uh, joy exposed facebook post of the week brought to you by stmspecialties.com and if you haven't um, subscribed to YouTube channel, subscribe now or download the po podcast from wherever you get your podcast. It's everywhere. So this is Joy Exposed on YouTube, Joycelyn Wells. Okay, Tokini Ibukuro. I must have screenshot this because I'm not familiar with this name. So what brand of black woman do y'all actually like? Not Beyonce, not Megan, not Cardi, not Kamala, not Michelle, not Oprah, not hood women, not suburban women, not corporate women, not domestic women, not mom with many children, not women with no kids, no women who hate, not women who hate sex, not women who enjoy sex. Y'all like sex with black women, black women, y'all do not actually like, though y'all do not like black women, do, you do not actually like black women. Um, I think women are really struggling with this idea of trying to exist and there's always something that a man complains about now keep in mind i don't choose sides because i'm sure women complain a hell of a lot about men too so it ain't like the women complain about the men i mean the men complain about the women but the women don't complain because women complain too so you know it gets kind of crazy on both sides i just think that in the light of this amazingly sexy, erotic, powerful video and song that Megan and Cardi did that the men had to come out fighting. Like the men don't want women that talk like that or do this. And, this, and truth be told that all any of the men would love to be with Meg Thee Stallion or Cardi B, right? So, you know, I think it's just people start talking out negative against something that they can't see in their mind that they're able to obtain so it's easy to say oh you know what i like steak but i don't like um i like steak but i don't like filet mignon it's easy to say that you know why it's easy to say that because i, I can't afford fucking filet mignon so i can talk about i don't like filet mignon but that's just because i can't afford it so i think people talk negative about it without understanding the reason they're feeling some kind of way is because it's out of reach for them at the time. Hey, LaShondra, thank you, girl, I love you too. Uh, I know I probably do need a mental break. That's all right, I'm gonna get it. Don't even worry about it, I'm straight gonna get it. And some laughter, <laughs> yes, I definitely need that, thank you. So, um, so I think people will react about um, the women or the situations that they can't afford. I mean, people will say all the time, oh, I don't really like to travel. When they, what they mean is I can't afford to travel, so I don't travel, right? So we have to be really careful about those things. I like that post as well. Let me see what else is on here. Um, I save some more. Before I move on, let me go to my save file. And I always save stuff in Facebook and don't go back and read it. But um, tonight is the night. I'm going back. Collections for later. That's me. Okay. Uh, 
maybe I didn't save it in there. Hmm. Oh, bummer. Where I don't now I don't know where I saved it. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll find it for next week, but for this week, I can't find what I saved. All right. So let's just uh, I'm gonna keep on going. Um, okay, so let's go to this. So I cooked a ro um a brisket. So I was so proud that I purchased a brisket to cook. You guys know I've been trying to cook a little bit more. So I purchased a brisket to cook it. And let me tell you guys what happened. Hey, Gail. So I posted a, I posted a picture I was going to cook this brisket, right? So let me tell you guys what happened. I waited a couple days to cook it because I needed to season it and marinate it and then cook it. Well, I cooked it. I did everything. I went through the whole steps and I put it in the Dutch oven. I put it in the oven uh, for 30 minutes uncovered and put the top on for an hour and a half and I let it cook, baby. It was cooking. So I take it out of the oven. I let it sit and kind of chill, right? Rest or breathe, they call it rest. And then I eventually I took a knife and a fork and I went to slice it because you already know if it's gonna be good or not, whether you can slice it and it sliced like butter. I was like, okay, girl, bitch, you did that, you did that. So I was kind of hype, 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 hype. But I went to taste it and I was like, oh, this kind of salty. This isn't what I was expecting. And so then I tasted it again. I was like, this ain't brisket. So I kept thinking about what it was. And because I cooked it and it was good, I ate a couple more pieces. I packed it in my lunch the next day to take to work. Then I got on, I talked to uh, Faceless Love and I was like, you know, my brisket tastes like the, the beef that's on a Reuben, like on those sandwiches with the sauerkraut and sweats. <laughs> he was like, corned beef? I said, yeah, it tastes like corned beef. He said, is it a corned beef brisket? And I was like, I don't think so. I think it's just a brisket. He was like, oh, okay. But you know, he, he was probably thinking, well, I don't know why it would taste like corned beef if it's not. <laughs> anyway, no, he didn't even ask me that. I He just asked me what kind of brisket was it? And I said a beef brisket. So then I looked online, the uh, corned beef, I typed in corned beef and as I was typing, brisket came up. So I guess I purchased a corned beef brisket. And when I was talking to my girlfriend Dawn today, she said, it, that's what it looked like when you posted, she's a chef, I'm not a chef. She said, that's what it looked like when you posted it, a corned beef brisket. And it had those seasonings and pickling spices in it. That's how they packed the corned beef. I was like, oh damn, I didn't know. So, but I did it anyway. So instead of me kind of freaking out, I decided I was gonna make Rubens for um, my dinner, which I didn't cause I went to sleep, but I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. So I'm gonna, I went and got the stuff to make the Russian sauce and I bought some sauerkraut and I got some Swiss cheese and some rye bread out of the deli at Publix. And I'm gonna make me a Reuben tomorrow. Yup, so boom. She cooking, she cooking, she cooking. Celebrating that. I've been doing a lot better with the cooking. Becoming a little braver, a little bolder. Um, trying not to stress myself so much about it because I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not, y'all know, I always say my expertise not in the kitchen, my expertise in the bedroom. But hey, I might be doing pretty good in the kitchen too, boo. So, I got to figure out some other stuff to cook next week. Like I got some chicken wings and I got some chicken strips. I got some fish. I love the um, lightly, lightly battered and fried um, white fish. So whiting or tilapia. Oh, yum, 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 yum. So I've been digging that. So I may do that again this week. And then I made those beef short ribs. And oh, let me tell you about the beef short ribs. So I made the beef short ribs and they were good, but let me tell you what I didn't like. I don't like the vinegar and they use, I'm finding out they use the vinegar a lot in beef to break, help break the beef down to make it tender. So I'm, 
don't like using the vinegar and it I smell like I could still smell the vinegar after I cooked it like it just I it wouldn't go away it was like in my nose I just felt like I smelled it but they, they were good and um I did eat them and they were very tender and seasoned well just the vinegar that was um apple cider the vinegar was in my nose well I was looking at my food list on the blood um blood type diet because I always check that when I'm trying something new to see if it's a better option to what I'm trying to eat without something making me really gassy or bloated or blah you know that kind of thing I don't know if y'all experience that but I don't really like to have gas like that bothers me when I have gas because I feel like I could have chosen something else I could have had another option but I didn't so uh I you know when I have gas I didn't choose the best option so I try to avoid having gas and eating gassy foods so um I was looking at my blood type diet list when I was trying to figure out what's it, what I needed for my Reuben if I could have the rye bread and I saw on there oils vinegar is a Vinegar is a hard no for me. And they call it, not they don't call it a hard no on there. They call it a um, it's so dramatic, the what they call it. It's harmful to my body. So when I read that vinegar was on the harmful list, it made sense to me why I was almost repulsed by the vinegar. Because it's not something that my body is, that my blood type O, it's not something that my blood type does well with. It acts as um it acts as a, a, it is harmful, right? So you try to avoid those things. So now I know instead of using some vinegar or apple cider vinegar, then I can do some red wine to cook with. And, you know, so that's how you learn so much about yourself. The more you learn, the more you know, the more you grow, right? And I know it sounds like hoo-ha, whatever, but for me, it's a big deal because I'm I don't want to feel sick. I don't want to feel bad. So I put some effort into trying to make sure that I'm not eating this shit that's going to have me sick. And that's the truth. So I know now from that list not to eat that. Have the vinegar. Another thing, speaking of the list, is that wheat products, bread, pasta, the wheat products make me so bloated. Um, it's a... Okay, Gail, listen, you can Google it. It's called um, Eat Right for Your Type. I'll send it to you. I'll send you the link that I use because I'm blood type O. So if you know your blood type, you just look up blood type A or AB or whatever food list. And then you can pull up a PDF and look at all the different lists on there. And um, I'm, you know what? Let me, I'm going to post mine in here now in the comments. And then you can... Um, I'll paste mine in here now in the comments and then you can look at mine and then uh, you can search out for yours. So another thing that I found out is wheat products make me gassy and bloated, have my stomach so blah and make me feel so lazy and tired. And, ugh. So I try to stay away from wheat products, breads, and there's some breads you can get some sprouted breads, like for me, rye bread, which I found out rye bread is a, um, is a neutral so it doesn't do anything one way or the other so I can eat it right so that's neutral it's not the benefit it's not beneficial for me but it's not harmful either so I got some that's why I got the ride today but I found out that if I eat sprouted breads and you can buy those in the fresh deli then um, where they bake in Publix you can get some sprouted breads over there you can also get sprouted breads in the freezer section you can eat those types of breads but not just your wheat bread so I try not to eat a lot of bread and pasta so I found this gluten-free pine pasta made by Rotini Rotini is the brand the label of it the I guess it's the brand of it the pasta but the pasta was a pina pasta they have it in spaghetti uh just different types of pasta with their gluten-free and I tried that last week with the um shrimp and cheese uh and that was really good and it didn't make me feel heavy or gassy or anything so hands down I'm on the gluten-free pasta now so I'm gonna definitely use that as well as that um super greens the vegetable pastas I got a couple of those too and I tried one and I'm, I'll try the other ones too so I'm really I, I'm loving that I'm starting to cook and pay attention to me and not 
relying on restaurants or trying to go out. Because when you go out to eat and you're trying to follow your food list, it's really difficult to eat. You got to get like, oh, I'll just have a piece of chicken. Do you have, you want this? Do you, no, no white potatoes. No, you know, you said, and so you eating out isn't necessarily pleasurable unless you say, well, fuck it, I'm gonna just eat whatever, right? So, and that's the hard thing is when you're like, fuck it, I'm eating whatever. Because it also means, you got, for me, it means I'm gonna feel sick later. It means my tummy's gonna hurt later. It means I'm gonna <coughs> have gas. I may feel nauseous or burning in my throat, like indigestion. And that's, a, these. if you're eating off of your food list, you don't get the indigestion, the gassy feeling. You don't get them, right? So that's really very cool. But anyway, so I'm learning a lot about cooking, how to cook and stuff to buy, stuff to order, um, uh, what to, you know, how to cook it. So I'm really very happy. That's definitely a celebration for me. The fact that I'm cooking more and I'm becoming bolder in the kitchen. I'm definitely becoming bolder in the kitchen. So that's good for me. Now I'll put my blood, my blood type O food list in there. And you guys will say like, oh my God, there's so much stuff on here. How can you not eat this? How can you not eat that? Well, it's, it's overwhelming at first because you eat what you know, right? So I, I'm now I don't eat a lot of pork. I may eat some bacon on a burger every now and then, but for the most part, I eat beef. And a lot of people don't eat beef for whatever reason, they don't eat beef. But for my blood type, beef is a benefit for me. So beef and bison, um, venison, those are benefits for my, for the old blood type. Where chicken is neutral, um, fish, white fish, salmon, those are benefits. Um, but pork is um, harmful. And I felt the effects of pork when it makes my joints, my joints hurt really bad when I'm eating pork. Um, you know, I had like, I think I had gout in my feet when I was in Italy last summer when I was complaining about my feet hurting so much. I think it was gout and pork would, that would be a problem with the pork. You know, so once you kind of figure out where you can go with this stuff, you do feel a lot better, you, a lot better. You start losing weight and not, you're not losing weight like all of a sudden, but you'll notice changes because you're no longer putting the harmful stuff that's making you inflamed, that's making you bloated, that's making you feel sick, the, the stuff that's making your body go into protective mode to hold on to the weight it has, you're removing that stuff from your body. And your body is now functioning better because you're only putting in the good stuff. So that was my blood type diet and how I ended up knowing that I shouldn't use vinegar on my beef. So I have to definitely get creative with that because I don't want to cook a whole meal and not be able to eat it because of the vinegar, how it smells, how I think about it. So that's important that I know that. So that was interesting for me to find out. And um, if you have questions about it, let me know. Otherwise, look at that's the I put the O type list in there. Um, look at that and then just go Google the yours and you can buy a whole book on it from Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. I think it's Dr. Atkins. No, uh, Dr. Diamo, Peter Diamo, Diadamo. He's the one that came up with the blood types. And it even goes back so far as talking about how blood type O are hunters, hunt their hunters and um, uh, hunters and just kind of um not scavengers though they pick up like berries and fruit and nuts like just kind of eat like that foraging maybe and it talk, that's how you kind of know a hunt what a hunter does a hunter is hunting meat and they're eating um when you go back as far as like caveman days or whatever you're hunting you're looking for meat and you're eating things along the way like nuts and stuff along the way so that's really cool when you kind of and it gives you some background on the blood types and what's good for the blood like what it also tells me that liquor isn't good for me which you guys know I was drinking a lot of liquor early in the pandemic and I couldn't do anything I was motionless I was uh, so I had to stop drinking a lot of dis distilled liquors, but wine is neutral for me. So the wine I can have, it doesn't have a benefit, but it doesn't have a harm. It doesn't do any harm either. Um, it's really just a neat list of um, 
a collection of things and you know and I love I love looking at the list and it definitely puts me in a good perspective in making choices about even fruit and fruit juices and grains and pastas and spices yeah like all of that like you know it's just crazy um the detail that goes in the research that's gone into this and a lot of clinics Mayo Clinic use it a lot of people use it when they're trying to help their clients to lose weight and to get rid of some of the ailments that they're having and the stuff that's making them feel so bad they're like okay let's try this list here you look at this food list let's try to work through this so that's kind of cool but um yeah so have a look at it and um oh yeah see how that works for you and this is Joycelyn Wells with Joy Exposed, and it's Friday, August 21st, and it's almost 10 o'clock. And um, remember, when Joy's exposed, everything just feels better. If you didn't subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, get on this goodness, right? So we're growing, learning a lot, and becoming stronger every day. That's part of our three cheers of joy, not quitting. And man, let me tell you. Ooh. I should, I'm celebrating that, the not quitting because I'm, I have quit some stuff before. All right, so what did, I was going to talk about, oh, this damn COVID, damn it. COVID is, uh, I don't know if COVID is the issue or the fact that we can't deal with the COVID. Either way, this shit is on my nerves so bad, like, I want to travel, I want to go, I want to see, I want to do, I want to, I need something. But COVID is like, no, Heffa, sit down. And so that's where I am. I'm sitting here uh, unhappy about the COVID because I want to go. I want to move, right? I, I, that's just a part of who I am. And so we're still not in the United States handling it any better. Not on a whole, because we don't have any leadership. We know that. So we know there's no one, no one particular person offering leadership, right? So we have individual leaders in places trying to do things. And that's hard to do when you're dealing with more than 300 million people, right? So we have to, we got to figure that piece out. I was happy to know that New York is no longer listed as a hotspot. They really went to work up there because remember at the beginning, New York was off the charts and now they've gotten a handle on it. So very pleased up there with that governor uh, Cuomo. And um, I heard him speaking last night. He spoke in reference to Biden. Well, I heard it today because I didn't listen to it last night. But I heard him talking and I was just like, this man is presidential. <laughs> so I thought he was presidential, and but he's relatively young still. So maybe after Biden Harris, he'll be on up for the ticket, you know. But he just seems like he is poised. And I was digging his speech last night, and he talked about how Biden could restore the soul of America. And and let me talk about that for a second because when we to say restore the soul of America, people all will always revert back to something about racism or going back to the way it was and not necessarily going back to the way it was. Not that, it's almost saying that America is the country that if you have a dream, it can happen. It may, all the dreams may not come true but we know so many dreams that do come true. And it's also the country where you're free. I mean, there are some jacked up systematic racial issues and some biases. Of course there are. And a lot of that, we're limited people. I won't say we, people are limited because of choices that are made or not even their choices, the choices that are made in the generation before them. People are limited because of the choices that their parents made or their grandparents made. So they fall into this cycle of what they know and afraid to step outside of. So we've got a lot of issues in this country. We got the jails are overcrowded with a lot of Black American men and women. And then we have children who aren't being taken care of. And we have education system that's always trying it's always faltering so we have some serious issues here 
police uh, corruption. So everything has its little quirk of something that's not good. There are also so many things that are good. And there's also so many things that you can choose, right? So it's like, like for me, I know that there are people who grow up and they see people selling drugs around them. Drugs are around them. They pe see people selling drugs around them. They're taught to sell drugs at an early age. That's what, how the money comes into the house. That wasn't my struggle. No one sold drugs around me. I don't even know. I can't even say that I know a drug dealer. And I grew up in Georgia, right? North Georgia. I can't even say that I know a drug dealer and maybe I was sheltered in that. So for me, I've never, it, if drugs were illegal for most of the time that I've been born. So for me, if something's illegal, I wasn't gonna do it. And I'm a very structured, rigid kind of thinker and I'm gonna, I'm a rule follower. I've always been a rule follower. I want to do things right. I want to do things good. I want to be successful. I want to be able to, I want to be powerful. I want like, so I have in my mind these things that I wanted. And I also have in my mind the things that I wanted for my children, for them to be powerful, for them to be decision making, decision makers, to be decisive. These are things that I wanted. These are things that were in me. These are things that I put in my children. So I know that there are cycles of negativity and corruption that happen. But when I think about being an American and I think about the freedom of me as an American, that's what I think about for other people too. I also think about the ability to move around the earth, around the globe because I'm American, because I have a right to roam and because there are um, alliances set up that we can move between countries and be treated well and with respect. And I love that. But now in this COVID, this administration, hell, before COVID with the, admin uh, the administration, you almost become hesitant to leave the country because they're making so many decisions to ostracize other countries. So hell, with last summer, my son and I were in Texas and we took our passports because I said, well, let's walk across the border into Mexico. But for the first time, and I've done that many times, for the first time, I was hesitant to do it because our president had created such a rift about building this fucking wall. So it's like, how does one person be in power and take away so many liberties of the people that he's supposed to be protecting? How do you get to run the country and clip my clip me off at the knees at the same time? How the fuck does that happen? So that's where I am right now. So I'm like, I want the soul of America restored. I want the soul of America that I'm connected to. I want it restored. I need to know that people come into this country we're going to take care of. People born into this country, we're going to take care of, demand to take care of. Yeah, shit happens. I know things happen. And I'm not saying that, that anybody is without fault or things don't happen. Don't jump like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if you have a dream, this is the country where your dream can come true. This is it. Look at, look at our entertainment industry, look at our legal system, look at those amazing women that grace the Democratic National Convention. Women, women, black, brown, white women, women who can stand up and say, I'm running, I want to be your vice president, or I was the first lady. Kick ass women and the other women. I'm the mayor of Atlanta. I ran for the governor of Georgia. I'm the I ran. I'm the governor of Chicago of Illinois or the mayor of Illi, uh, mayor of Chicago. Like these are some strong ass women that are amazing because this is America. 
if you go to China, uh, Mexico, you can travel to many countries all over the world and you don't have as many women with these opportunities as we have here in the United States. So that's what America is for me. America is for me is I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna get dirty as hell and I'm gonna do what I need to do because I want some good shit to happen for me. And I feel like if it doesn't happen for me, that's a choice I made. I honest, I feel that way. When I went to Washington DC to visit the um, African American Museum, and baby, I've talked about this before, it is amazing. Talking about getting dirty. It is amazing. When I went to that museum and I walked through there and I realized that I had not done enough for the people who came before me, when I realized that my ass is spoiled and lazy, entitled, expecting shit to be given to me. I'm not working hard. I, what, I realized that when I got to look at the history of Black Americans coming into America, Africans coming into America, all over the world where slaves were pulled to come work here in the United States, China, Slaves were pulled from many places to come work into the United States, in the United States. And when, when I saw that and the long hours and the picking cotton and the rice and the whoo, tobacco, man, I thought, Joycelyn, you cannot whine another fucking day of your life. You can't whine anymore because people died for this shit. People died for you. People died in the fields, people died trying to get free. People stood out in leadership trying to free others and risk death and risk going to jail. Now, am I gonna go to jail for selling some drugs? Fuck no. But am I gonna go to jail for trying to protect somebody or free somebody? Absolutely. For a movement, for something that's gonna benefit somebody other than me? Yes, I can take that charge. I can take that. But am I going to go to jail because I broke the law selling some drugs, something that's going to hurt somebody else? No, I'm not going to do that. Robbing somebody, stealing a car. No, I'm not going to do that. Those things are, those are selfish things. Those are things, those are choices that you make and you understand it's a consequence connected to it after you make the choice. So for me as a black American woman in this country, I need for the soul of America to be restored. I need that shit because I need to believe I'm so powerful. I need to know that I'm powerful, not just here in the floor of my bedroom or in this city. I'm powerful all over the world that when I'm walking down the street in a foreign country and people are staring at me, they're not staring at me like, oh, look at that nigga. You know, they staring at me thinking, where in the world is this woman from? She is beautiful. She is bold. She is courageous. She is free. That's what I need for people to see. She is American. So Cuomo did a good job talking about restoring the soul of America. I love that. We got to figure out this COVID, which uh, I listened to Biden's speech. Biden, when he accepted, he said, first thing he's going to do is we got to figure out this COVID. We need instant tests. We need uh, rapid tests with the instant results. We need supplies for families and schools. And I felt that, I believed him. I was listening to Biden this morning, watching it on the YouTube. And I was listening to him thinking like a calm, just kind of like daddy is home. Like somebody is here to take charge. That's how I felt listening to him last night because he spoke succinctly and calming and caring and factual and and it we in living in this chaotic rant of this president everything is everybody's crazy as fuck nobody has anything to hold on to and you think about our president has done so much and said he's so selfish he's selfish he's narcissistic we know these things and even as selfish as he is you still have all of these people who support him and th if not anything this makes you realize how many people don't give a fuck about you like 
How many people literally don't care about anybody but themselves? And I know that's kind of been a mantra of the Republican Party when it was like, oh, they only care about money. They don't care about people. And that still seems to be pretty true. They, they definitely don't care about people. They want what they want for themselves and forget the masses. And that's scary. And that is the reason why it's important that we vote. And I know people will say they're not voting and why and blah, 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 fuck that. Vote. You owe it to whoever died on the front lines trying to vote. You owe it to them to vote. It's your vote. Vote ever however the fuck you want. You can do a write-in for Mickey Mouse. That's your choice, but at least exercise your right to vote. We need a new president. We need some leadership. We're dying. We're, the country is dying. And it's okay that we've been through racial riots. We've had the civil unrest with the police killing the black men. That shit needed to come to light. Come to light. NWA, Ice Cube, they've been talking about that out of the West for years, hell, if I'm 50, what, 30 years easy? They've been talking about that. So it ain't new, people know that. But then now it happened to George Floyd on T, we saw it, the video recording of it. It just so happened in a fucking pandemic where everybody had time, everybody could watch it. And you know what, people had to do something. Nobody could brush it under the rug and another black man this and all these things came to light at the same time. And we were all on don't, no movement. All we could do was watch it and get angry and do something. And this is where we are now. We're angry and we need to do something. And our doing something is exercising our right to vote. Exercise your right to vote. It isn't to go out and hurt somebody else. That's the way they do things. You don't follow them. You don't follow the murderer. You don't get them back because they murdered. You get them back because you get their asses out of there. Vote. That's the most important thing. I've had some conversations with some people and they'll say something like, well, white men do that all the time. Just because it's white doesn't mean it's right. Shit. So what if, if somebody is debaucherous and criminal and egregious in their actions and activities because they do it doesn't mean it's the right thing for you to do we know right from wrong there's a moral tick in everybody you know something right you know something wrong you make a decision for righteousness you make a decision that doesn't that will not fuck up your children that will not fuck up your grandkids that your children don't have to pay for the sins of the parents if you think of it like that it makes perfect sense you know what I can't do that because if I don't pay back the sin, my child might have to, or my grandchild might have to, or my great grandchild might have to. If you think of somebody other than you, somebody connected to you that you're responsible for paying back your sin, you make a better decision. You make a better decision. And we talked about that. The things we're taught generate in the generations, those cycles. Break that shit, you ain't gotta do that. You ain't gotta do it, I don't care. One thing in my family that we're trying to do that's important, I talked to my uncle about this, we're trying to normalize that our children go to college. We're trying to normalize that college is important. Now, I'm, I'm third generation college, so it's not that, it's not that we don't know it's just that everybody doesn't go. Everybody does not go or they go and they don't finish. Well, you know what? It's time for everybody to fucking finish. That's what it is. There's no more, oh, I don't want to go. Uh, th that doesn't fly anymore because the college is what gives you opportunities. And so what if you get student loans? Who cares? You get student loans, you pay them as you go and you keep in mind that if I didn't have it, I wouldn't even be able to do the things I can do with the money that I make. Stop making excuses for trying to be great. Stop settling for mediocrity. Stop settling because the people before you settle and the people before them settle and the people before them settle. If you fucking want something, go get it. Go get it. You want better for your family, go vote. You want a job making more money, go to school. 
You want to trade, get a trade. What you don't want to do is to end up in an industry that becomes obsolete. You don't want to be obsolete. And people become obsolete all the time. We're in a damn pandemic. People aren't working. And when it's time to start looking for jobs, the people whose jobs have become obsolete because we're in a pandemic, think of it like this. Textbooks. Textbooks have been changing as it is, but now that education is available online, the physical printing of a book is about to be a damn wrap. If that's how you're making your money in textbooks and you haven't advanced technology wise, you will become obsolete. You won't have a place to be. You don't want to be obsolete. You want to put yourself in a position that you're digging the roots of your family so deep that every single person that comes behind you know there is a way to get to glory. There is a way to get to opportunity. That's what our responsibility is. And right now, that is what the fuck do we do to restore what it means or restore the soul of America or restore what it means to be an American. And if you don't like what it means to you to be an American, stop limiting your experiences. You can be anything you fucking want to be. I've even told people to have a felony who are struggling with finding jobs. You know how you get past the felony in, the, in America? Go to college. If you have a felony and you go to college and get a bachelor's degree, that puts you above the fact that you have limited skills and a felony. Now you have a degree and a felony. That gets you above the felony. You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> That's the thing. You can go to law school. You can do whatever you want to do, but you may not do it in the space in which you're standing. It may cause you, require you to step outside of your box and go to a different place to do it. But as long as you are complacent standing in the box in which you stand, you will always have some complaints and you will know to blame yourself because nobody's holding you hostage there but yourself. Um, what else is I going to talk about? This is Joycelyn Wells with Joy Exposed. Uh, talked about Biden, his speech. I'm excited about Biden. I'm excited about Kamala uh, Harris. You know, it's, I wonder if that's um, sexist that I call him by his last name. I call her by her first name. I don't think so. I don't mean any harm by it. Um, but I wonder if that's if they would think that way. But okay, they would have to call me. And if they listen to my podcast and call me out on that shit, it's been a great day. I'll change to whatever. <laughs> so um, I'm excited about them on the ticket. I'm ready to vote. Uh, I know early voting starts like October 19th. Make sure you have a plan to vote. As a matter of fact, there's a number you can um, text 30330. If you text 30330 and text the word United, they will help you establish a plan of voting even as much as transportation. So 30330, text United to that number. That was on the... Um, uh, uh Harris yeah Kamala Harris talked about that on um the DNC this week so um yeah so you gotta vote the our current administration is doing some wonky shit with the postal service which has been in business for 240 something years and they're and they're trying to tear it down so your mail-in ballots don't get to where they're supposed to be we get we can whine about that all we want or we can go fucking vote early voting Absolutely. Uh, and if you go early, it's going to be a very few people there. When I early vote, it's a very few people there. So between October 19th and probably October 31st, whatever the last day is, go vote. It's okay. If you want to wait to the last minute and stand in the line and complain because you stood in the line, that's fine too. Just fucking vote. <laughs> Just vote. But you start thinking of what you're going to do and how you're going to vote and take people with you. Make sure everybody's registered. We owe it to, we owe it to get this lousy. Oh my gosh, I try so hard not to be negative with my words. We owe it to our, ourselves to get this inept leader out of the office. We cannot do another four years. 
we cannot do another four years. If we do another four years of this administration, hell, all of us might be in fucking chains. Ain't that some shit. Never, 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 never thought I had that thought. We got to vote. I'm going to talk about it every week, too. I'm requiring it of everybody who listens to Joy Exposed. Go vote. So it is um, Friday night, um, August 21st. My birthday is next week. I'll be 51. And um, I, I'm supposed to be going hiking, I think. I don't know yet. I don't have all the details, but something to get me outside, to get me over my blah, blah, blah. Yuck, 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 right? So I got to figure that piece out. But I feel a little riled up right now talking about this election, talking about the Democratic National Convention and um, that damn President Obama is bad. Michelle, oh, she is bad too. Man, I, we got some great people. We have some great representation. And the, uh, it, well, the Democratic Party has some great representation. I'm a Democrat, so I'm, I don't even skirt that issue. If you um, are not, that's fine too. There's no, I don't get mad at people for their choices, right? So that's fine. I love the people on my timeline. I've met some amazing people. Whatever your choice is, is your choice. So I don't knock that. You vote the way you want to vote, but you make sure that you vote for goodness. You vote for the right thing and that you're not questioning how many people are being harmed because you only voted for yourself. That's what we have to pay attention to. Okay, so it's Joyce Lynn Wells with Joy Exposed. And remember when Joy's exposed, everything just feels better. Now, before we leave, I wanna talk about this COVID one more time because you know, the kids are all around and because the kids are around and at college and going back to traditional school, um, there have been some rules put out by the CDC, some guidelines for the CDC on things that college kids can and cannot do. So I got this list from Faceless Love because it was fucking hilarious. I, and I felt, I feel bad for the kids, but it, I mean, it had to be said. So the University of Georgia put out a list of um, COVID-19 considerations. <laughs> I'm going to read this real quick before I go. It says, you are your safest sex partner. Practice solo sex or limit the number of sexual partners you have. <laughs> solo sex, that's right. That's always good. Consistent and you know how to do it. Wash your hands and objects <laughs> with warm water for 20 seconds before and after sexual activity <laughs> and objects. The virus has been found in semen and feces of people with COVID-19. We do not know if COVID-19 can be spread through vaginal or anal sex. And it makes sense. If, if you have had COVID and it's going to be in your semen, it's going to be, yeah, that makes perfect sense. We talked about that. It was still in March, beginning of April. We talked about that on Joy Exposed. Consider wearing a face mask during sex. <laughs> Heavy breathing and panting can further spread the virus and wearing a mask can reduce the risk. And lastly, avoid kissing and be creative with sexual positions that reduce close face-to-face -face contact. <laughs> so that came out the University of Georgia. I was like, that is brilliant. And they have to put it out for the college kids because you know, the college kids get to school and they like whatever, like they out for out of the house for the first time they start. And some people are very liberal sexually, you know, they just go for it. So I love that they put the guidelines out. Well, what happened, people started um, fussing about people started fussing about it and told them and then they took it down. So I guess they'll they had it on the website and like, they'll probably provide it to the students um, maybe um, uh, on in their dorms and you know the health center. They'll probably provide it that way to keep the public out of their business. But I thought that was kind of funny. And uh, 
he also sent me, and I'll read this next week because it's already 1030. He also sent me an article where this guy was talking about, you're going to be at the club and some man's going to be like, yo, man, you got a condom and a mask. Let me borrow your mask for a minute. <laughs> so I think that's funny, but we got to take care of ourselves and we got to take care of our sex, our sexual partners, our lovers. We have to uh, definitely keep ourselves safe. And, you know, and it's a time of isolation so our desires are high our needs are high and if given the opportunity to get some yummy sex I'm probably going to have it right so we have to make sure that we protect ourselves when doing that so if you're having a new sex partner you got to think that thing through what does it look like um you know just have to think all the details you know and is it worth it or just have some good yummy sex by yourself that's always an option too so it is um, Friday, uh, August 21st, 1027. This is Joycelyn Wells with Joy Exposed. And we're Joy Exposed podcast is available wherever you get your great podcast and also YouTube. And um, remember, when Joy is exposed, everything just feels better. And I'll see you guys in a week. Bye. Mwah.